There we go. <laughs> well, hello, Hi. gentlemen. Way up here. <laughs> awesome. Well, we got it. You know, technology, you know, 90% of the time comes through and it's uh, helpful. And and sometimes it doesn't. Here and Some days it's your friend and some days we, it is not. <laughs> fought through it, guys. This is such a pleasure. Welcome to On the Road to Rock. This is uh, the first time that any member of Rough Cut has ever been on this show. That includes Paul Shortino, and he'll do any interview anywhere. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, what's been up? What's uh, I guess this is a loaded question, but what's what's the last year been like for you guys? I mean, obviously working on some new material. We will talk about the single uh, coming up in a minute, but what, what's it been like? What have you guys been up to working on stuff? It, it's been what we took advantage of the pandemic and worked. Yeah. That's what we did. That not we many people did that. <laughs> that's that's a rarity I hear that not many people did <laughs> yeah, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um well you guys a lot of people are talking about uh, you know the new single which is Black Rose and it is awesome. I'll tell you I was a little bit blown away like it's it's very melodic, a little dark and brooding. Really good song and the video is tremendous. Already 10,000 views on this thing or uh on YouTube. Right. What talk bring us to kind of the genesis of this? What's kind of the reception been like since it came out for, for on your end? And kind of take us to the, the genesis of the song and how you kind of crafted this masterpiece. Well, first off, the reception has been fantastic, it's really been better than we expected. And uh, we've had uh, actually, we've had almost zero negative negativity about it. Um, which is, which is really great. Nobody's, you know, throwing any shit around. They're just talking <laughs> about the song, you know, and, and telling us how much they like the song, which is of course what we, what we want to hear. Um, we started the, we, we wrote the song when we were still with the other guys, actually. It was uh, a four, the, the old line of the old, collaboration. Yep. Um, but we've changed it. Yeah, yeah, but we've changed it. So basically, I wrote most of the music. Dave helped out with the music and the and, and, the, melodies. The, and the melodies. And um, our singer, uh, Stephen St. James, wrote new lyrics and melodies Great. and the verses. Matt Thorne wrote some of the uh, melodies as well. And lyrics. And uh, yeah, and lyrics. So it was it was a uh, it was a combination, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm just really excited because I feel like Rough Cut is a band that in general, it, there is, it, it just doesn't get the, probably the, the play, probably doesn't get the credit that you guys deserve from all the way back, uh, you know, in, in, from the early to mid 80s to now. So to see that there's an appetite for this band, to see that you guys have kept this thing going. And Dave, I'll, I kind of want to ask you, has there been moments throughout all this? I mean, you've had you know, to had to move through different lineups, you've had different adversities, but you keep this, you keep this animal rolling, man. How, how difficult has it been? How gratifying is it when you finally get to a point like this where you're releasing killer material? Well, for the long ride that Rough Cut has had, I mean, you know, Paul came up with the name, of course, but as far as to answer your question, most of the work that Chris and I do it reverts even to the early days. We like kind of was the structure of uh, of the sound that Rough Cut had. Okay. Yeah. And um, potatoes. Yeah, yeah. meat and potatoes, <laughs> or to say, like he says. Uh, and what we did was we brought new blood into Rough Cut to help diversify the direction we were going, it's still rough cut. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like you said, it still yeah. even sounds like, you know, and it always will, but having our new lineup has opened a lot of doors for us. Um, it, it's, there's no hard feelings with anybody. I mean, the, the other guys, they just didn't want to keep going yeah. You know, yeah. back when we started this and, you know, the pandemic's been a whole year, you know, none of it, especially Chris and I, we're not just going to sit around and do nothing. Yeah, sure. You know, so, you know, so, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. Chris. Yeah. I was going to say, basically, you know, there were differences of opinion about, you know, shows and what shows to play and direction and everybody sort of had their different agendas. Yeah. Right. 
And that's what kills a band. It know? did. It and, did. and you know, we just, uh, Dave, like Dave Chris, said, you know, we weren't just going to sit around. And do nothing. And, I even <laughs> asked uh, Chris when I, when I talked to him, he, he's the one that hit me. He says, well, why don't you go out and see the, I've been working with Stephen St. James. They've been writing songs. They used to be in a band again. Yes. You know? Yep. Sorry. And I said, yep. okay, I'll go see because, you know, it's hard to feel Paul Shortino's shoes, you know, cause he's such a great singer. So I went out there, I saw him, I was sold. I could see the versatility that the band was going to get by having this man, uh, front rough cut. Yeah. And, um, to be honest with you, we decided, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that there was, that it seemed like it'd be easier to work with. Don't get me wrong, though. We gave those guys every opportunity. When we'd email back and forth, text back and forth, I used to try to call Matt constantly, and they just didn't want nothing to do with us anymore. Well, they just, they, he and Chris and Matt actually known each other for 40, 50 years. And, uh, it's just a uh, difference of opinions. Um, yeah, they weren't, they didn't want to do it. You know, they didn't want to do it anymore. So Chris and I said, well, we're in hell with that. <laughs> well, so we understand that they're going to do something now. So, you know, whatever, more power, yeah. film, you know, well, That's this cool. lineup is solidified and I love, I love Stephen St. James. I think that the, the history that you guys have, Chris, and it's really yeah. showing his vocals are, are just, he's, he's just got the range to pull these songs off. But I, for those that don't know, we got to take a, got to get back in our way back machine and go back. Cause there might be some of our listeners that aren't familiar with the lineage that you two share for many, many years that goes back to Mickey rat. A lot of people may not even realize that rat was formerly Mickey Rat. You guys were right. at the onset of that. And you two and Jakey e. Lee left Mickey Rat to form Rough Cut. Take us back to that and just sort of how you guys well, met. It goes back and, even and how, further, bro. Yeah. Take and us back. It, take us all the way it back. Goes back. It goes I, back further than that. But <laughs> the thing about Mickey Rat, that was when Chris was involved. And then I was like the first, I guess you'd say, drummer under the name rat, either first or second guy. And Jake was a guitar player. Yeah. So basically Steven and I uh, co-founded yeah. Mickey rat together in San yes. Diego and then moved up in, in 1980 to LA to, to make it big. <laughs> and and uh, I moved halfway across the country <laughs> to make it big. <laughs> That's right. So, and there was uh it's, there's an interesting story. A lot of uh, folks from San Diego, uh, moved up here after we did and uh, it became a thing, you know, and then everybody wanted to be part of that sunset strip thing because this is where you were going to get a deal. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Or not, you know, <laughs> it's, it's where we got a deal. <laughs> well, and so you talk to us about kind of the scene before the sunset strip exploded into what we, that many rock fans know you guys are there in the seventies. Yeah. Or you, you go to San Diego in the seventies, but you come up in the very, very onset of this. What was it? How, did you see a shift and a change and kind of the, the people that were hanging out yeah. there, a lot of kids from the Valley yeah, start coming out, stuff like that. I what came was that in like? 79 okay. and it was completely, I don't know. I new way. Yeah. It was, it was, it was Skinny the, ties, yeah, in, you the know? cars and all kinds of stuff like that. The and knack then, uh, was big. Yeah, yeah, yeah the knack, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then when once uh, I uh, hooked up with these guys, we've hooked up off and on for many years. There's been a lot of musical chairs right. between Rat, Mickey Rat, Rough Cut. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie. Yeah, Dino, Ronnie Dio. Uh, there's, there's been, Rough Cut has a family tree. They have ridiculous. a lineage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is the so six when, degrees when of I Rough Cut. Band, when I joined the band, it was, uh, it was Craig Goldie. Yes. And Dave and Paul and, 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 uh, and then Matt. You and Matt, Matt came together. Came in. And Wendy was managing. And uh, so, uh, and we came in and uh, uh, Ronnie uh, uh, brought us into the studio and did a, uh, did a, a Our first a demo. demo. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was from the start, from the very start, it was like, we were off to a great start with well, this thing. She, she worked really fast. It only took us, what, 
nine Maybe, months. No, I'm talking about by the time we signed with Warner Brothers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Two years. Oh, two, I think it was. I think it was less than two years, actually. Than, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you're right. And you know, just for for you, Chris, playing alongside a Jakey e. Lee, playing alongside a Craig Goldie. What were those guys? like to play with because they're both so i mean i i always loved craig's work uh not only in rough cut but certainly whenever he was in do i loved uh you know sacred heart and those albums just what was it like working with those guitarists yeah 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 vivian campbell did sacred heart oh what did i say craig. Sacred? what i did i lock yeah. up the wolves he was on lock up the wolves maybe yeah. yes yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um you know, uh, well, playing with Craig, I mean, Craig was, he's a, you know, one of those guys. He's hes a kind of a virtuoso player. Yeah. Um, Incredible he, guitar he, player. He really is. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it was really interesting to play with him. And then having Ronnie producing us and uh, uh, was really, he took, you know, two different entities and made it sound cohesive like one thing it made it sound like a band and uh so we had you know we had different styles but it worked out really well and uh i don't know if you've heard the songs that we did with ronnie uh but uh there was uh try try a little, try harder, a little harder and, and queen of seduction, uh, of seduction. The, the first uh demo that we had done before chris and matt and all them guys with jake it was on the the uh Miller High Life Rocks to Riches record, and it was also on LA's hottest unsigned bands. And we had a keyboard player who wound up being Claude, in, Claude uh, Snell, band. right? Yeah, so once we went to look for a bass player, and I mentioned Matt because I used to play him rat with Matt, Matt mm -hmm. was the bass player, and uh, then Matt brought Chris with him and hence no more keyboard player and that's when the real rough cut seemed to take shape because we became a two guitar band and i found out real quick why bands like thin lizzy and i there's not very many but that the two lead guitar players in a band click and it's because each guy is the opposite Mm -hmm. of each other that's yeah. true that's a very good point See, i'd say he Judas don't Priest play was anything like, that. like a mirror and a mirror didn't play anything like him and so the secret was to get them together and not just in harmony but they used to like they could play off of each other you know yeah. wars all kinds of stuff I'm, we brought I'm back and forth we brought that yeah. to the album yeah. yeah you got you guys did two albums from warner brothers what yeah. What do you, I mean, people always talk about, there's always a short list of bands that, that people will say, well, you know, why, why didn't they make it bigger? Why weren't they a mega, you know, mega hit type band? Rough Cut's one of them. What do you think was the reason that, that Rough Cut didn't rise to that arena level in the, in the mid eighties? Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's basically fairly simple. It's, it's, there's, there's two, there were two major reasons for that. Could one of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was that when we got when we got signed, Ted Templeman was yep. going to produce it. And the trouble is, is Ted was a busy guy doing Van Halen and he was doing uh, David, you know, Lee Ross album had just come out. So he just, you know, obviously he just he wanted to do it. But and we wanted him to do it. But we, you know, we we, we, we wasted time. Long. So and in that nine months to a year that we wasted a lot of things shifted yeah. and for one thing you know it's like you, you when you get signed to a major label like warner brothers you want to make sure that you you know your a and r person is really on top of it and behind you and we basically lost everything that. and and you know we had to we picked up a new a and our person on that but it wasn't quite the same because you know it, it's like we, we weren't his baby we weren't right. anybody's baby right? yeah the you know it was tom wally he left at warner brothers to go and head up interscope you yeah. know but the thing is that chris is talking about is after after we waited as long as we waited to get ted and finally decided on tom allen and go into the studio and start our record by the time it came out the day before it was released, MTV changed their, their format. format. 
<laughs> no more rock bands. It was like, you know, Cindy Lop, yeah, Lionel Madonna. Richie, Madonna, stuff like that. You know, Michael Jackson. So yeah. there was a lot of contributing, contributing factors, factors yeah. to the window closing on us. And then yeah. it changed again. Yeah, yeah by 86, that. by 86, it was back. It blew back around. More. Yeah, it came back around. But, you know, uh, we, we did. The thing is, is we did a hell of a lot of touring. Right. I mean, we were out for, you know, a year and a half, uh, you know, with Ronnie and then with Accept and Crocus. And, Crocus. And, uh, and then we came back and did the second record. So we were out there doing what we needed to be doing, with which every new band that's newly signed yeah. Yeah. should be doing. But the problem was, was you'd go to record stores and we'd pull up in, you know, uh, Philip Pittsburgh and you'd go to the record store and there'd be two records in the store or none or none. <laughs> and, you know, you know, you got a big crowd of people standing outside to come in the record and store there's no product for us to talk to them. And they want to buy the record and it wasn't there because of the A&R mix up. I mean, wow. they didn't ship enough. There was all kinds of reasons that factor into that. Yeah. That uh, why we basically, instead of talking about it, it's we missed our window. Well, that's what happened. That sounds us. like the spinal tap scene where the A&R guy asked the band to <laughs> kick his ass because of a mistake. Remember, nobody shows up to the signing and he says, it's my fault. I did it. Kick this ass. There, were, there was no right, ass to remember. kick. <laughs> there was no exactly. ass to kick in this case. <laughs> um, one you know, of the beauty, one of the beauty things about now, as we speak, is we're in control of our own. Destiny. Yes. So, and we've got. You think Black Rose is something? You wait. I did. Yeah. So, got, so this is uh, really. Yeah, we've got some really great stuff in store. That's yeah. what I kind of wanted to go next is, um, you know, as I understand it, you guys have done some interviews and I've I've heard them. And uh, obviously this is kind of leading towards an EP that you guys yes. want to put out and you want to do that Correct. in 2021 in this in this yes. calendar yes. year. Yes. yes. And yes. you guys are do it. You guys are kind of independently releasing or are you kind of waiting to sign a new deal? They're both. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We've had offers already and we passed We've them up. turned down some offers yeah. already and uh, we're, we're waiting for the right deal. We think we may have found it, but um, yeah. in the meantime, we've been, we've been recording and uh, you know, we've have a studio right here and uh, we've been recording on working on these uh, new songs and getting them ready to, uh, to release. Right. So, yeah. What was the light doing this video? coming up. I'm sorry. Oh, I was I was going to ask about that. We're going to definitely get into the live stuff because that's important, especially in 2021. But I was going to ask about the video uh, for Black Rose because this is really good production value it, to me. And, you know, I know a lot of young people. I think that making videos is as important as it was in the 80s, believe it or not, even though there's not an MTV to play them because YouTube is the key. I think see, kids YouTube see this stuff. Yeah, MTV. right? So Yeah, YouTube's the new... Yes, MTV, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it is. And so you guys put a lot into this video. You did, you did, you put. Has, it's got production. It's really, it's well shot. Yeah, That's important. It, these it turned days. out really well, actually. Yeah, it turned out really well. We were we, our storyboard. We were very happy with. It. Yeah, and uh, uh, we're uh, we we are like I said, uh, the other songs that we already have in the can. We're already discussing whether or not we're going to make another single and drop on everybody even before the EP comes out. But, you know, I can't really talk about that. Yet. Right. There, well, I was hoping for, you know, we wanted the blabbermouth headline breaking news, Dave. So come <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, you talk about live shows. What What's the plan coming up here? Because I, as I've said, it's like Motley Crue and Def Leppard announced they were postponing and right around that same the next day. Tour date started falling upon us like manna from heaven. Uh, Band right, said, we're right. going out. Let's do it. So what's yeah, up for yeah. you guys? Yeah. Well, same thing. I yeah. mean, we, we've been in the same boat everybody else has been in. And uh, that's. Especially in point. California. Yeah, especially and, uh, in California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But in a way it's been, you know, it's not like we've wasted the time because we've spent a lot of time, you know, uh, writing, writing and recalling songs. Yeah. So. Uh, but we're uh, we're ready to play now. So we've got we've we've got uh, a couple of shows that are just been confirmed. Uh, one is the uh, 31st in Atlanta and the first in uh, Green Greensboro, North, yeah, North Carolina. Carolina. Wow. There's some Houston dates coming up, I think, in September. There's uh, 
some Arizona dates mm-hmm. in October. Phoenix, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're currently working on try- now that California is starting to open back up. <laughs> Welcome. Because you know, Chris is like raised in San Diego. We've right. got a big following there. So yeah. we've been thinking about putting something together there too. But you'll Certainly. hear about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. very excited about that, you guys. Well, I mean, for you guys, I mean, that you guys have, uh, you, I think the last interview I saw, you guys were in the same room together. You guys, there's something about, the chemistry between you two, you've kept this rough cut thing alive. You guys are obviously friends. You get along. How important is it later in your career to, to play with people that you get along with? It seems simple enough, right? But it's, it's rare. Well, as you, you know, as well as we do, you're a grown man as you get older. Okay. I won't say your patience grows shorter, but I'll say this, <laughs> you're seem to have a better handle on how to deal with the people that that are around you you know your workplace okay i mean we're not by no means saying that the original band didn't get along you know uh but as far as the new lineup goes there's magic there yeah. there's real magic yeah, there's no there's there are no there are literally no problems yeah the new guitar player we have darren householder yeah. The guy is insane. He's so he's good. A, he's a great player. He's a, and he's we a can't forget our nice friend guy. Jeff Buner on a bass, who Jeff we know Buner, very well yeah. from the Loyal it's, Order, good friend of ours. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah, guy. Oh, no, Jeff's Jeff's uh, been my rock <laughs> since we started this. <laughs> wow. So, so, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the other point I was going to make is the older you get, the more sense of purpose yes. you have. And, you know, we're not, you know, back then we were still kind of kids and, you know, now we're not fucking around. (laughs) There we go. Like I said, we're, we're in control of our own destiny. So, and the way we see it, uh, like we said, we've turned down a few offers, but more offers are coming in. Black Rose is just now starting to get traction. You're right. Uh, over a half a million views on Facebook. And like you said, the YouTube has yep. gone up to over 10,000. And um, we can't wait to drop the next single on everyone. But, you know, we're going to do it correctly. And the record will come out this year. Uh we're not going to tell like we don't really haven't made up our minds yet on a title for it, but um, it's an EP yeah. and, and everyone will love it. It's in the same tradition, you know, in the same tradition with a new edge. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. You guys are great. I can't thank you enough for, for hopping on with us today. This has just been a, tr- a true pleasure, you guys. And I can't wait to see what's next want everybody to go subscribe. You guys have a great social media following and definitely uh, yeah. the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you've got the YouTube channel. So if you want to be the first one, when they, they drop these videos, like they did for black Rose, subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get the notification and you'll get it right away. So subscribe, right? I couldn't have said it my, better myself. But I should, I should have been an A and R guy. Clearly. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> you've done this before. Uh, t- a time or two, Dave. Uh, guys, yeah, Chris, Dave, thank you guys so much. Catch up soon, and hopefully we get you guys to the Midwest. I'm here in Kansas City, and we are ready for some rough cut. Right Deal? on, brother. All right. We'll thank you, you guys. All right. You bet. Thanks, Take care, man. brother. You bet.